Hello everyone, this is Logan59XP here, here for another episode of the Nencast here on February 7th of 2023, and today marks the beginning of Season 7, and for our first episode of Season 7 here in 2023, we are of course here to talk about the upcoming Nintendo Direct. Now, I was already very tempted to put out a you know, before the Direct was actually announced, predictions thing anyway, because it's like, well, well, we, we always get a Direct in the first half, right? Whether it's in February or March or April, we always get some Nintendo Direct, you know, in the first half of the year, particularly in the earlier parts of the year. And the last couple of years have all happened in February, so it was kind of obvious that, well, like, e regardless of rumors, right? Like, even just ignoring all the rumors, because obviously there's been a lot of rumors lately with, oh, Nintendo Direct, Nintendo Direct, you know, all that stuff. But even outside of that, it was just really obvious that we were going to get one, you know, and, you know, soon, but probably even in February. So I was very tempted to do a, you know, predictions and hopes for the inevitable, you know, kind of like what I did, uh, uh, not last year. Was it last year or was it the year before that? I don't know. Like that one time where I made a video that was like predicting the inevitable September Nintendo Direct. And then what do you know? The September Direct actually happened. I was very tempted to do that, but for this. And I was going to call it, I think, the uh, predictions and hopes for early 2023 Nintendo Direct or something like that. To like kind of, you know, keep my uh, space, kind of keep my... Uh, kind of room open there with uh, what, what the dates could be. So I'll just say early 2023, just in case it doesn't happen in February. But of course, we have a February Direct coming. It's happening tomorrow, in fact. So of course, we have to talk about what we're going to see and not see in it. So, <laughs> yeah, so I already got a, li I got a list here. I got a list here. Um, I got separated into three different sections. Um, I was thinking of doing the the thing I have done for a couple of like the E3 ones, where it's like you know zero percent, twenty five percent, fifty percent, seventy five percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, that whole thing. Those of you that remember those uh, those uh, direct uh, discussions or whatever or predictions. Uh, I've decided to not do that this time. We're just going to separate them into three kind of generic categories here. So we're going to have uh, third party, which is exactly what it says third party which will be the smallest section unsurprisingly even though it's going to make up probably most of the direct if we're being honest but obviously people don't watch nintendo directs for the third party stuff they watch nintendo directs for the nintendo reveals so we're going to obviously be focusing on that but i will talk about the third party stuff um then we have first party, which I've categorized as the small to medium kind of scale stuff, you know, mainly like, you know, DLCs and updates and, you know, release dates for existing stuff, stuff like, you know, very kind of, you know, the stuff you like, it's, it's like super obvious, like all the obligatory stuff for the most part. And then we have the first party large. These, these are your like big you know, these, these are your big, you know, uh, trailers, your big announcements, your big reveals, stuff like that. Uh, and we'll be doing that one last. So let's go ahead and just kick things in, things off by uh, getting third party out of the way, since it's probably the least interesting thing uh, on this list. Now, this is the part where I admittedly may have missed a couple of games. So if I missed a notable third party game that's coming out on the Switch and it's not on this list, then apologies. By all means, leave it down in the comments if you want to talk about it and let me know what it is but here are all the ones at least i could think of off the top of my head that are coming to the switch and are notable so first things first we have octopath uh octopath 2 which is also coming out on ps4 i don't know if there's a ps5 version hopefully there is so you can get 4k um but i know it's coming to switch PS4 and I believe PC. So it's coming to most of the modern platforms. Well, if you count PS4 as a modern platform, but you know what I'm trying to say. You know, it's coming out, started as a Switch exclusive in 2018, was ex which was really popular, kicked off the current streak of Square and Team Asano in their HD 2D games. You know, there was Triangle Strategy, there was Bravely Default 2, although I don't know if that one was an HD 2D game. <laughs> I don't really pay attention to those games all that much. Uh, we got that Dragon Quest 3 
remake. Yeah, I remember that. I remember when they announced that back in 2021, and we still haven't seen Jack Squad about it ever since. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, stuff like that. But yeah, Octopath 2, I admittedly do, am very much not in the know when it comes to this title, but I know it's uh, one of the big third-party releases coming out for the Switch, so I figured I'd go ahead and give it a mention because it's going to be coming out I think this month, actually. If not this month, then next month. Again, I don't pay attention to it too much, but I know it's coming out soon, so we're going to get in our trailer for it. Uh, is there a demo for it already? Because all of the Team Asano games get, like, those little demos or whatever. I don't know if uh, Oct uh, if it doesn't have one already, it'll get one. I think, it, there, I think there already is one, but if there is not a demo for this game, there will be one announced. We'll just go with that. Again, not very in the know on this game, so apologies if I'm... Uh, Missing something on that. Next up, a Hogwarts Legacy Switch version, because against all the odds, this game is somehow going to be on the Switch. And yes, it is a native port, I believe. I do not think it is a cloud version. I think it is a real, actual native port. How the hell they're going to pull that off without it being absolutely ridiculous, I have no clue. But obviously this game, uh, actually no, it, it's not out just yet. Um, it's going to be coming out really soon. Uh, obviously uh, the PS5, Series X, and PC versions are coming out uh, in, a, in a couple of days. Then we're going to have the PS4 and Xbox One versions, I think in April. And then the Switch version, I think, is coming out in June. Again, apologies if I'm messing up the dates on those. But what I, know, but what I know for sure is the Switch version is coming out last. And again, it apparently is a native version. It's not cloud. But again, don't quote me on that. But I, last I heard, I think it was a native version. So there's at least that. I'll give them that. At least it's native. But also, how the hell is this game going to run? <laughs> It's the question everyone asks whenever one of these, like, big AAA releases comes to Switch. It's like, okay, how is this thing going to run? How is this not going to melt the darn system? Especially when it's being designed for the next-gen consoles. But, I mean, not not strictly, because, of course, the PS4 and Xbox One versions are there. But they are putting out the current-gen versions first and putting out the last-gen versions later. So that gives the impression, at least, that the game was designed with the current-gen in mind. And last-gen was kind of secondary. And, of course, the Switch even more secondary there than that but we'll see how that goes down but yeah so hogwarts legacy um next up multiverses for the switch now this is not rumored or anything but this is one of those things that's kind of baffling like we have nick all-stars on the switch and multiverses is on literally everything else and yet it's not on the switch uh, I'm not really sure what the reason is for that now it is now it is unreal engine 4 so it's probably not gonna run as well. Then again, what engine did Nick All Stars use? Was Nick All Stars Unity? It might have been Unity, actually. I don't know, whatever. Point is, Multiverses is not on the Switch, and it's a little surprising. I mean, I have personally no stakes in Multiverses at this point. I haven't played the game really since it came out. I've booted it up once in a blue moon just to try it out, but I, the, the, the mechanics of that game just don't click for me. That's like, it's like that, and also I'm not a big fan of the UI and how it's very live service-y, <laughs> you know? I don't like the live service-y nature of the UI and the fact that it's got the freaking shop and all that stuff. But my main problem with the game is just I don't vibe with the gameplay. It's just not my thing. However, I have been waiting on the Animaniacs to get added back in because apparently they are coming because they literally put up, uh, Warner Bros. put up like the the soundtrack for their stage on YouTube like months ago, and yet they're still not in the game as far as I'm aware of, so yeah, but yeah, multiverses on the Switch. That's something that I think people would be interested in and also makes all the sense in the world. Uh, the only reason I could think of for them not having it on the Switch, because it's not that it wouldn't run. I mean, it would clearly run. It's just, I think, maybe it's a, is it a netcode issue? Because I know on the Switch version of Nick All-Stars, they only have rollback for like 1v1s, I think, but not for 2v2s. Maybe maybe that would be a problem. Maybe they wouldn't, because I, I, that, that's something I've heard in the past is like, oh, the Switch can't handle rollback with more than X amount of players, which I don't know how much I want to buy into that because I don't see what that, what, what would, what would, what, like, <laughs> what? What does a system's power have to do with, with networking? <laughs> I mean, the Switch's built-in Wi-Fi chip ain't great, but that shouldn't have that shouldn't affect rollback 
functioning. I don't know, that, that, that whole thing is a really weird thing. I, I, I admittedly, I know nothing about how rollback like actually works and what the re what requirements you really need from the hardware for it to function properly. I have no nothing about that. I'm not gonna pretend like I do, but any but yeah. So multiverse is on the Switch. It's not rumored or anything, but it's something that I think would be kind of cool and also makes all the sense in the world. And it's kind of weird that it doesn't exist yet. Okay, now on to um, the pseudo first party stuff. Uh, th this is still a third party. This is still in the third party section for me, but it's technically in some respects first party, so whatever. Uh, first up, Bayonetta Origins was announced at the Game Awards. Uh, that's going to be here. That's really all I got to say. Uh, it's going to be here, like obviously. It's coming out in March, I think. But yeah, it's going to be here. That's all that really has to be said. Uh, also, we'll get... Um, I don't think we've gotten any DLC for Sparks of Hope yet. Of course, we have the Season Pass, and there is that uh, anticipated Rayman expansion for it. Um, uh, that has not been shown off at all, so we could totally see that here. So that, that's something else I expect to see here, is we'll probably get, if not the Rayman expansion, at least like some new content for Sparks of Hope here. And that's pretty much all I gotta say in terms of third party. Again, I only had a couple of games for this one, because it's not something I think about all too much but yeah Octopath, Hogwarts Legacy and then Bandetta and Mario and Rabbids those are all like 100% gonna be here and then Multiverses is like a you know it could be here it could not but uh, I think that'd be kind of interesting okay now let's get on to the big stuff well not the big big stuff but you know the first party first party the stuff everyone cares about okay so let's go ahead and get some of the obligatory obvious stuff out of the way number one fire emblem engage dlc this is just kind of obvious okay moving on uh new trailer for uh kirby return to dreamland deluxe i know that they've been putting out some trailers on youtube but we'll probably get one final trailer or at the very least a hey this game is coming out really soon because it's coming out again i think in february so it's coming out really soon so we'll get another little you know, snippet for that um Mario Kart 8 Booster Course Wave 4, you know, pretty obvious. Um, I don't think it's going to come out the same day. I think it's going to come out maybe a week or two later. So probably like in mid to late February is when it will actually come out. But we'll get our, at the very least, our first tease of it. They might do what they did last time in the September Direct where they showed us some of it, but not all of it. And they saved like the full proper reveal for like a couple months later. They might do that again. I'm hoping they don't. I'd like to see all of Wave 4 this time around as opposed to just like one or two courses, but we'll see. Um, a new Splatoon 3 season. We, of course, have the upcoming Splatfest, which, by the way, uh, stay tuned. I will be streaming that, most likely. <laughs> I know I've kind of fumbled the ball when it comes to streaming some of the Splatfest, but I'm trying to get that resolved. I streamed the last one that happened in January, and we're going to try and keep that going. Uh, the next one's actually going to be about chocolate. I believe it is white versus dark versus milk chocolate, which is a topic that is more interesting to me than whatever the last one was that I don't even remember. Uh, it's kind of funny. The Splatoon 3 Splatfests have kind of, you know, bounced back and forth between interesting topics and not interesting topics, at least as, at least for me personally. Uh, not that chocolate is the best topic for a Splatfest ever, but it's more interesting to me than, like, the the gear the gear grub one from like a, a while ago or like whatever the last one was that i don't even remember oh it was it was the the sour spicy that was like the last one right yeah I, th I think the chocolate one is more interesting than that one honestly but that's just me but anyways point is they'll probably remind us hey Splatfest is happening really soon and then they'll probably give us at least a teaser for whatever the next uh the next big update is the next season uh, maybe we'll get to see some more old uh, maps come back. Or there's also some maps that they teased a long time ago that we haven't seen since. So that'll be cool to see. Um, Advanced Wars. Oh, man, Advanced Wars. <laughs> this game, man, this poor game. This game would have been out the door right now if it wasn't for Putin, man. <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness here, um, this game... Just, just put the thing out, Nintendo. Like, who cares? Like, no one cares anymore. Like, it's been a year. It's been a year since the invasion started. It's not over, unfortunately, but it's still a thing. But it's also not going anywhere, right? And Nintendo's plan was to wait until the war was over. Yeah, uh, that's not happening anytime soon, unfortunately. So, 
your only option is to just put the game out there and say, screw it. I mean, if we can get a new Call of Duty game, you know, which is way, way more, you know, brutal and gory and whatever than freaking Advanced Wars with its, like, cartoony... Like, I, that whole thing never made any sense. It's like, okay, Call of Duty's... Now, of course, I mean, Activision was never, ever going to delay a Call of Duty game because of the war, but, like, it's, it's still really weird, right? Like, Call of Duty, which is way more graphic and way more realistic than Advanced Wars is A-OK, -okay, but Advanced Wars with, oh, no, just because it has tanks in it and there's, like, a character that's based off of no, 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 not a character. Isn't, like, the plot of that game, like, based around, like, Russia or, like, a Russia stand-in? Or they're not Russia, necessarily, but they're, like, basically Russia and all, but they, I get, I, I've never played the game. I know nothing about that story, but I've heard that the, the, one of the, it, I think it's the second game is, like, based, like, one of the factions is, ba like, the, is based off of Russia or something. I don't know. Don't, do not quote me on that. Do not quote me on that. But, um... But yeah, just just put the game out. The game is obviously done. It was supposed to come out forever ago. Just put the thing out. Either shadow drop the thing, which I don't think they're going to do because they have physical copies. If it was a digital only game, they could shadow drop it. But not with physical releases because, of course, they have physical releases. So they can't shadow drop it. Or I guess they could shadow drop the digital version and be like physical version coming out in like a week or two or something. But I don't know. I think, I don't know. Just, just give us a release date. Just be like, it's coming out in March. March 21st or whatever. I don't care. Just, 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 I mean, this isn't even a game that I personally have any interest in. But, like, come on. Just put this game out here. <laughs> just put it out. The war's not going anywhere. There's no point delaying it. Like, any further. Just put the game out there. Signed, everyone. <laughs> okay. And then last but not least for, like, the kind of smaller first party stuff. Uh, this is probably the only, like, really, like, new game they'll probably announce that's going to be on the smaller side, but also still be kind of notable. Um, there's obviously been rumors of Mario Baseball coming back. And I feel like under any other circumstance, this would be something people would be like, Oh, cool, new Mario Baseball. We haven't had one of those in forever. But the problem is, I don't think anyone is going into this game with any modicum of hope. Or at least they're not going into it nearly as hopeful as they would have been maybe a few years ago. Because the fact of the matter is, people have been burned by the Mario Sports games on Switch. Because while they're not horrible, they're better than, like, Ultra Smash on the Wii U, they're not what people are looking for. They, they don't have, they, they, they just don't quite meet that mark, right? Basically, they're not good enough, is what it boils down to. Now, I, ha now, I haven't played any of those games. I haven't played Aces, I haven't played Super Rush, and I haven't even played uh, Stri Strikers. But the general consensus is that they're okay at best. And that has turned a lot of people off of these games. And every time a new one comes out, people have gotten more and more cynical. And I think that cynicism peaked with Mario Strikers because Mario Strikers was the big one, right? That was like the one that people are waiting on for eons, right? That's like the fan favorite. And then it came out and... Well, it wasn't ripped apart necessarily it just was not good enough there wasn't enough content you know people had other issues with like some other aspects of the game it, it, it just didn't pan out the, the game that had to hit didn't hit and i think that has caused everyone if they if they already didn't have much anticipation for any new sports titles i think that officially killed it for people and i think that this Mario Baseball game is going to probably go, assuming it does get announced, it's probably going to be the same thing where maybe it looks promising, but then the game will come out and the people will complain about the same thing they've complained about every other game. Not enough content! I'm not saying that's the only issue with some of these other games. I know people have issues with them that aren't just lack of content, but that's the big one, right? It's lack of content. There's not enough content. And then they put out the free updates, which take too long to come out and don't add enough substantial content back in to make the whole thing worth it anyway. So, yeah. I don't know. I know there are people out there still looking forward to this game. And by all means, you know, if you're excited for this game, that's cool. But I imagine a lot of people are going to be going into this game very, very skeptical. They are going to be 
looking at it with a magnifying glass, let me tell you. People are going to be ready to tear this game a new one because they have been burned one too many times with the others. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But, I mean, again, the track record with the Mario sports games, heck, just, just the sports games in general, you know, we, we can throw Switch Sports in there. You know, Switch Sports had the same problem, except Switch Sports only got one update. One. Now, actually, mm, it's possible we can get another update in this direct because uh, there was a uh, there was data mining. I think in the the golf update, maybe I don't know. There was a there was data mining in the game at some point that found that apparently basketball and baseball were uh, were uh, in the code for. I would, I would actually really like to see uh, the baseball game come back from the original Wii Sports, but uh, but yeah. So I don't know. Uh, pe people have just been burned on these like spin-off sports games and the sports games in general during this era so i feel like people are going to go into a new mario baseball extremely skeptical no matter what but yeah so mario baseball for better or for worse maybe here and yeah and that's pretty much what i got to say in regards to the kind of smaller to medium size kind of stuff again mostly just you know stuff we already know or updates to stuff we already know but now let's get into the bigger stuff First things first, the big new story DLC for Splatoon 3. Now, it would make all sense in the world for it to be here because if we go back to 2018 in the equivalent to what would be this Direct, the March 2018 Direct, which was the Direct that most people remember for being the reveal of Smash Ultimate, um, was also when they announced Octo Expansion for the first time. So it makes all the sense in the world that they'll announce the new expansion for Splatoon 3 that we already know is coming here. Um, I'm not sure if they'll save it for the end, because because in the March 2018 Direct, uh, Octo Expansion was the last thing they showed before they had Smash. Like, the last regular thing they showed was Octo Expansion, then they had the one last thing and it went into Smash Ultimate. Um, but the last, like, regular thing in the Direct they showed, technically, if you want to count it that, was the Octo Expansion. They could do that here. They, could, I mean, they won't. They will not end on Octa on um, the new expansion though, because we got other bigger things that we'll be talking about in a second. That will clearly be the one last thing and not a Splatoon thing. But, but yeah, this is one of the things they'll probably save it for like later on in the direct. Um, but yeah, uh, this will probably obviously happen alongside whatever, like, hey, new Splatoon update or whatever. Like, they'll do it, because that's what they did last time as well. They were like, hey, new Splatoon 2 update, and also we have the new expansion coming. They'll do that exact same thing. So they'll probably start with, hey, you know, Splatfest, and the new season is coming, and here's the new stages and weapons that are coming with it. Oh, and also here's a teaser uh, and a release date for the Splatoon 3, you know, expansion. Uh, which I'm definitely looking forward to. And whenever it does come out, you can bet your ass I'll be streaming it uh, here on YouTube. So be on the lookout for that whenever it comes out. But uh, but yeah, so well, 2 or 3 story DLC, it's definitely uh, one of the bigger ones, I think. I know some people will disagree, but Splatoon is one of their big franchises now, so I think it is totally fair to put it in the large category. At the bottom of the large category, but in the category. I think that Splatoon has earned its place as a high tier Nintendo IP in my mind at least. I know I'm biased saying that because I'm obviously a big fan of the series, but even outside of that, just look at like how popular it is in Japan, right? I mean, yeah, it's not as big here, but it's so freaking big in Japan. Like that it is absolutely a you know a high tier like it's like it's like an A minus like on the like how big is this Nintendo like franchise list? Splatoon is like an A minus at least. Or a B plus. It's up there. It's up there. It's pretty big. It's not the biggest, but it's pretty big. But anyways, yeah. So Splatoon 3 expansion. Uh, a new Mario movie trailer. Now this one I'm kind of back and forth on. Because while they've obviously not been resistant at all to having Mario movie stuff in the directs. Which is really interesting. Considering that they don't even talk about the mobile games in the directs. Although I'm not complaining about that at all. But I think it clearly goes to show the reason why they do that though. Is because they want to make it clear that this is something that means a lot to them. Nintendo wants everyone to know this movie is coming out. And that's why they've been putting their full marketing grunt behind it. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it may... But at the same time, it's like, hmm. 
I mean, obviously the movie is coming out in two months, so it would make sense to have kind of like the final big trailer for it, especially since the kind of pattern for big releases is like three trailers. Um, you know, we get our, you know we get the initial trailer, then we get the second trailer, then we get like the third and final trailer, then after that point it's just a bunch of TV spots and stuff. So, well, we might get a like like one like last big proper trailer, but I could also see them saving that for its own independent direct, similar to what they did with the last two trailers. So I'm kind of 50-50 in whether or not. I mean, they might mention it. They might be like, oh yeah, the Mario movie is coming out, but they might not give us a trailer and they might save it for its own direct like they did the last two. But yeah. Uh, although speaking of Mario, I guess that brings us to something that a lot of people are hoping for and even predicting in some cases. And that is a new mainline Mario title. I've seen people flip-flop between whether or not it would be a 2D game or a 3D game, but in my mind, it has to be 3D. I mean, we haven't had a proper new 3D entry since 2017. Now, you could argue we haven't had a proper 2D entry since 2012. Yeah, the Mario Maker games exist, and they're effectively the successor to the new Super Mario Bros. stuff, but we haven't had a proper 100% from the ground up, no ifs, ands, or buts, 2D Mario game since 2012. That was 10 years ago. <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like the new Super Mario Bros. series, at least, has, ver has run its course, and they're probably not going to do another one of those. They might do a different 2D Mario thing, similar to like what they've done with Mario Maker. Although Mario Maker is basically new Super Mario Bros., but with a level editor. Obviously, it has the Mario 1, 3, and World styles and stuff, but you know what I'm trying to say, right? It's very much built on that same engine. Um... But, but, you know, but we haven't had a proper new 3D entry since Odyssey in 2017. And considering that we have Tears of the Kingdom, which we'll be getting to in a bit, so considering that we have that coming out in the first half of the year, what would be the perfect way to mirror 2017? 2017 had a big new Zelda game in the first half, and then it had a big new Mario game in the second half. Why not repeat that golden strategy this time around, especially because we do have that new Mario movie coming out. Now, I've seen a lot of people be like, oh, there's going to be tons of people buying out, m m buying Mario games and buying Switches because of the new movie. But I'm not sure if I fully buy that because if this was like 2017, 2018, 2019, sure. But this is 2023. We are the beginning of the Twilight era of the Switch, where things are starting, not completely, but are starting starting to wind down. I mean, there's already been rumors that after Tears of the Kingdom, there won't even be that much left in 2023. Um, but like the, the, the Twilight era of the Switch has begun. It is six years old. The hardware is outdated. We all know it. It's And most people are at a point now where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm ready for a new, a new system. Now, I'm not saying the new system should come out right now, but we're ready for like the, the, the cycle. The, the cycle to begin where, like, rumors start really mounting and we start getting, you know, like, leaks and, you know, we start getting, like, teases and stuff. Like, you know, pe people are ready, are ready for new hardware. At least I'm ready for new hardware, that's for sure. Um, now, to be clear, they're not announcing new hardware anytime soon. They're not going to announce new hardware until at the earliest, like, in September. Because they have Tears of the Kingdom and they don't want to deflate Tears of the Kingdom by announcing new hardware before it comes out. So they're going to wait until like September or October to announce it at the earliest. They may even wait until 2024. Uh, it depends on when it's coming out though. Because if the Switch 2 is coming out in March of 2024, they'll probably announce it in September or October. Similar to what they did with the original system. Or if it's coming out in November 2024, then maybe they'll announce it in like March or April. Or February or something. I mean, who knows, right? I mean, it's Nintendo we're talking about. <laughs> so who friggin' knows? But but anyways, I'm getting off track. Your point is... New 3D Mario, it's been long overdue. We haven't had a new one since Odyssey. And if we can get a new Zelda, we can get a new Mario. But I don't think we're gonna get it. At least not here, and here's why. I think they're saving... The next, at least the next, maybe, maybe maybe we can get a 2D game. Maybe we can get a 2D game. But in terms of 3D, I think we're not going to get another, like, a, we're not going to get a new 3D game, a new proper 3D game. Like, yes, we had Bowser's Fury before everyone says it. Yes, we did. Which I still haven't played, by the way. I need to get around to that. 
But I think they're saving the next proper full 3D Mario for the next system. There's maybe a launch title even. Not, I have nothing to base that on. This isn't based on any rumors or anything. Just, just it's kind of just a gut feeling I have is that they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna hold off the next big 3D Mario as like a launch title for the Switch 2 because because they gotta have something big for the Switch 2, right? They're not gonna have Zelda because we have Tears of the Kingdom coming out soon, and they're not gonna delay it again, especially when they've been putting out marketing about how hey, it's a hundred days till Tears of the Kingdom comes out. They would not be doing that. Nintendo would not be putting out little little tweets and Instagram posts about how oh, it's only a hundred days left. They would not be doing that. The game was going to be delayed. The game is coming out in May. The, is, the release date is not going anywhere. It is not going to be delayed again. It is coming out in May, which means they're going to need something big. Now, there's a couple other games they could do. Like, for example, you know, Mario Kart 9 would obviously be a really big launch title. Um, or they could do something even more crazy. They could do, like... Freaking Smash 6 could be the launch title for the Switch 2. That's not happening. But, man, could you imagine the Switch 2 and the big launch title is a new Smash game? Now, that would sell some units. <laughs> uh, but that's a whole other conversation for another day. But, anyways. Okay, I'm dragging this part out. Long story short, new 3D Mario. Yes, the, the timing with the movie is potent. And it's been, lo it's been long enough since Odyssey. But my gut feeling is telling me they're going to hold it off one more year. They're going to save that sucker for 2024 to launch alongside the next system. Whenever it comes out in 2024, whether it's May, sorry, whether it's March or November, I think they're saving it for the next system. Kid Icarus Uprising. Now, this is one I probably wouldn't bother to mention if it wasn't for the fact that, of course, a few months ago, Sakurai put up that video... Um, where he was talking about, uh, I believe, on the, I don't, uh, I don't remember exactly. It was about, it was about like the the pot in Kid Icarus Uprising or whatever. I don't know. He was talking about something involving Kid Icarus Uprising. I don't remember the video that well, admittedly. Um, but he was talking about something in Kid Icarus Uprising as a part of his, you know, series that he does over on his channel where he talks about game development and stuff like that. And at the very end. He said, you know, it'd be pretty cool if we could get Kid Icarus Uprising on modern platforms. And everyone was like, do, 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 do. he's teasing something, he's teasing something. And I'm sitting here like, I mean, it's not impossible, but like, come on. <laughs> now that being said, there is one piece of evidence going in favor of that being a tease. And that is the fact that, again, I forget how long ago this was. I think, again, it was a few months ago. On, like, LinkedIn or whatever. I don't think it was actually LinkedIn. But on, like, on, like a LinkedIn or a LinkedIn equivalent, there was a listing for, like, Bandai Namco working on a unnamed 3D, like, action game for Nintendo. Which everyone immediately assumed was Kid Icarus Uprising or some kind of new Kid Icarus project. And again, it makes sense that it'd be banned. And, that, and there's some logic to this. I mean, of course, Bandai Namco has worked with Sakurai uh, for the last two Smash games. So it would make all the sense in the world that Sakurai, assuming he's the one in the director's chair, at least, would be the one. Assuming it's a new game, at least. It would make sense that uh, he would work with uh, Bandai Namco on a Uprising 2 or even an Uprising. But, you know, it makes sense that Bandai Namco is involved because of the connection with Smash and stuff like that. So that makes sense. But I don't know. I, I feel like this is a little too pie in the sky. I mean, anything's possible, but I don't know. I, I feel like the whole kid, I mean, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just don't think it's going to happen, at least not right now. You know, never say, I'm not saying it'll never happen, just I don't think it's happening right now. And I think that that little tease Sakurai did was probably just, you know, was, was probably nothing. <laughs> but everyone, of course, wants to interpret it as meaning something, although I don't necessarily think it is. But there is that Bandai Namco listing, so fair enough. There's some evidence, but not enough evidence that I'm like, oh yeah, this is totally happening. So... 
that combined with the oh, oh, oh this is a whole video right here that combined with the uh the news from last year that sakurai is now officially semi-retired apparently that's a whole other conversation what that means for the future of smash and stuff like that but that will be its own conversation its own discussion uh, somewhere uh, in the, sometime in the future but uh but that also kind of i mean then again okay granted he doesn't need to be super involved for a port right I mean, I'm sure he'd be overseeing it, of course. He'd be involved, but he doesn't have to be, like, super involved for, like, a port. If it's just Uprising HD. But if it's Uprising 2, hmm, that's a different conversation entirely. But, uh, anyways, long story short, Kid Icarus Uprising, a lot of people want to see it. People are really hoping that that Sakurai tease was a tease and not just nothing. And there's that Bandai Namco listing, but right now I think it's probably a little bit of wishful thinking. If we get it, cool, but I wouldn't go in expecting it. Let's just go ahead and get this last one out of the way, because let's be real here. This is good. This happens in every single Nintendo Direct for the last, like, four or five years. Uh, let's, 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 let's just get Metroid out of the way before we end on, of course, Zelda. So... Metroid Prime Trilogy, Metroid Prime Remake, Metroid Prime 4, Metroid Prime anything. Is it actually going to happen, folks? Is it finally happening after all these years, after four years since the reboot? The game was announced six years ago at E3. Oh, E3. <laughs> talk about another conversation. We got to talk about the whole thing with the future of E3 now that uh, the, the big three are no longer going to be participating in what that means for especially Nintendo, but all the all of the companies, really. Like, the future of E3 itself is, you know, that that's a whole, again, that's a whole other conversation for another day. But, um, but they announced Prime 4 at E3 2017. It was by far the... <coughs> <coughs> Apologies. <laughs> it was by far the biggest thing they announced. There was, like, E3 2017 was a dang good Nintendo Direct. But the biggest thing that they announced in that Direct, or Spotlight was what it was officially called, but Direct, uh, was definitely Metroid Prime 4. That was the one that got people going absolutely insane, right? And we still, six years later, know jack freaking squat about it. <laughs> Other than two years in, they decided to reboot it with uh, Retro Studios after it was originally uh, rumored, at least, this is not confirmed. Uh, it was rumored to be developed by Bandai Namco Philippines or Malaysia, I think. Uh, Bandai Namco, one of the divisions of Bandai Namco, I believe, yeah, the Philippines or Malaysian division. Uh, like one of those, like, countries. Uh, but yeah, like it was rumored to be developed by Bandai Namco, and then they moved it over to Retro, uh, few, like, uh, four years ago, and we haven't heard jack squat about it ever since. I think everyone can agree that it is it is time. It has been more than long enough. It has been more than long enough. We are entering again, we are entering the twilight years of the Switch. They are running out of time to have this game come out and actually still matter, at least on the current hardware. Heck, there are, there are people out there that think they should just delay the game and save it for the Switch too so it can look and run better, but because because of, of how long it's taken to come out. But yeah, so Metroid Prime 4, it's time we see it. I'm not even a big Metroid person. I play, I played Metroid Dread uh, um, last year, and that was pretty good. But I'm not really a Metroid person. I'm not really into that series. But obviously, this game is... To say it's highly anticipated is an understatement. It's probably, like, Metroid Prime 4 is like Nintendo's Half-Life 3. <laughs> it's like the big one, or one of the big ones, of, like, the super highly anticipated game that's supposed to not make... You know, light the world on fire or whatever and we haven't seen anything about it in six years and it's been four years since it was rebooted with retro that is more than enough time to show us something something for god's sake something i don't think at, at this point i don't think that's i don't think that's unreasonable to ask right like believe me I am all for making sure the game comes out when it's ready. And if we have to delay the game, I'm totally fine with that. When they delayed Zelda to 2023, I was fine with that. But it's been four years and we haven't seen even a screenshot. I think it's pretty fair at this point to ask for even a screenshot for at least a little five second shot of Samus walking around. Just give us something, something. Right? It's been long enough. They clearly have something they can show us. 
I think at this point, that's pretty reasonable to ask. It's been four years. We can get something. Okay, they're not ready to do the big blowout. That's fine. That's fine. They're not ready to do the, the big, like, we're going to show every Okay, that, that's fine. That's fine. But give us, like, a one-minute teaser where we actually get to see gameplay. Just give us something. I'm not even a big Metroid person, but come on, just give us something. It has been more than long enough. It has been four years. You can show us something. I think that's fair enough to ask for a game that has been in development for six years, technically four with the reboot. I think it's been long enough. I think it's time we get to see something. And since there is no E3, or at least there's no effective E3 since the companies aren't participating... That means that the usual, oh, they'll save it for E3, doesn't apply anymore. Because otherwise, I would have said, oh yeah, they'll save Prime 4 as like their one more thing for E3 2023. But they're not even going to be a part of E3 this year. Or at least, supposedly they won't. It's not officially confirmed by Nintendo themselves, but it's all but confirmed they're not going to be there. But also, the other two won't be there either. Again, that's a whole other conversation for the future of E3 or whatever. But yeah, at this point... It's been more than long enough. I, I'm dragging this part out again. Apologies for me dragging out these these like little sections by saying the same thing over and over and over again. <laughs> but Metroid Prime 4. It's been in development at Retro for four years. We've known about it for six years, and we're nearing the end of the Switch's life cycle. It is time we see something. Something. Even if we don't get a release date, just show us freaking something. I don't think that's much to ask for this particular game at this point. And finally, the thing that they will most likely be ending the entire Direct on as per usual, Zelda. Of course, Zelda needs no introduction. Tears of the Kingdom is by far, without question, their big 2023 title. It was supposed to come out in 2022, rumored to come out in 2021 or even 2020 and then now it's finally coming out in 2023 and again like i said before it is not going to get delayed they've already started being all hey hey 100 days 100 days they would not be doing that if it was going to get delayed so the game is coming out it is coming out 100 in may of 2023 i forget the exact day i think it's may 13th but it's coming out it's coming out on the day they say it will it is not going to get pushed back any further and despite the fact that the game is only a few months away, and we've known about it for a long time, it was announced back in 2019, as a matter of fact, we still know barely anything about it. Now, we know more about it than Prime 4, <laughs> but we still don't know what's really different about the game. I think that's the big thing everyone is waiting for, is they're waiting for the, oh, that's what makes the game new. We're, we're waiting for that because, well, obviously we have the Sky Islands and we have some new abilities and stuff, which look cool, but we haven't seen enough, right? We haven't seen enough for us to be like, okay, now we know what this game is going to do differently because that's the big thing everyone wants to know is what makes this game like, like okay, if, okay if, if I be completely and totally real with you guys, what people really want to know is what is in this game that justifies how long it's taken to come out? That's the real honest to God answer. I think everyone deep inside is asking. Because this game was supposed to be kind of a quick and easy release because it was using the same overworld as Breath of the Wild. But it's taken just as long as Breath of the Wild to come out, if not longer. So now everyone's like, okay, now, like, like, if they're taking this long on the game, then that must mean that there's a lot that's new in it that we haven't seen yet that justifies how long it's taken to come out. But we haven't seen that yet. We've seen bits and pieces again. We've seen the sky, we've seen the sky world and stuff like that. We haven't seen enough yet. We've only seen little bits and pieces. But we haven't had a real proper like, you know, Nintendo Switch presentation 2017 or E3 2016 level like here is here is Tears of the Kingdom. Here's what's in it. Here's what makes it unique. Here's all the new abilities. Here's all this new stuff. We haven't had that that big blowout. We haven't had the big blowout. Now, I don't think we're going to get a direct for it. As crazy as that might sound. Like, why would they not do a direct for Tears of the Kingdom? It's their big release. It's Zelda. Da, 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 da. They didn't do one for Breath of the Wild either. 
Now granted, Breath of the Wild had an effective Nintendo Direct auto itself in the form of E3 2016, which was basically just all Zelda, but I don't know. If Breath of the Wild didn't get a full proper independent direct then i don't see why tears of the kingdom a game that borrows and will have less new stuff than that game did by the sheer nature that it's a sequel using similar assets like like i don't know just <laughs> i don't know if it's gonna get a direct to be honest i think i think they're gonna just give us like another trailer and then we'll get a bunch of like tv spots and stuff like that like we're gonna get like we're just waiting for that like that big trailer again that like you know switch presentation 2017 or e3 2016 like okay this is what the game really has to offer we're waiting for that waiting for that we haven't had that yet we had again we've had bits and pieces with the sky world and stuff but we haven't had that big blowout yet and the time is now if they're not going to do a separate direct for it this is the time to give us that big like three minute trailer that shows off all the new stuff like like you know like you know, this is the time to do it and alongside this new trailer, we will most likely get the official announcement of that Switch OLED that everyone's been, that was leaked a little while ago. Even if that specific leak isn't actually true, we're gonna obviously get a Switch OLED. Like, come on, we're gonna obviously get a special edition Zelda Switch OLED. Even if that specific leak from a while ago was fake. Even if that specific one is fake, we're obviously still gonna get one because like, come on, like, like, obviously. So, yeah. So, Tears of the Kingdom, big blowout trailer, hopefully. And then uh, the Switch OLED uh, announcement. And that's pretty much it. Uh, as obvious, as we enter the, again, as we enter the Twilight era of the Switch, um, there's going to probably be less and less, like, new exciting stuff popping up as more and more games uh get you know pushed over to being on uh the switch 2 similar to what it was like for the wii u in 2016 where yeah the wii u had games in 2016 but it's obvious all of the big ones had moved over to the nx at the time so we were just waiting for the nx right that was all of 2016 it was all waiting for the nx waiting for the nx waiting for the nx we're not there just yet with the switch again we have tears of the kingdom that's a big title right there we have pikmin 4 we did I even talk about Pikmin 4? Oh my god, I feel like an idiot. Pikmin 4! <laughs> well, I'm sure some people are screaming at their monitors. Wait, you haven't talked about Pikmin 4 yet! Pikmin 4. Speaking of games that have been in development for a very long time... <laughs> Now, this game, to its credit, was not officially announced until last year, but we've known about it since 2015! Miyamoto announced it in 2015! And we have been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting to finally see it. And then finally in September, we got it. Again, some more to Metroid. I'm not a Pikmin fan, but man, it was nice to see that game finally get shown off and to see you know, people like Arlo, you know, finally get some, finally get thrown a bone, right? <laughs> uh, but, um,. Yeah, Pikmin 4 will be here. It's coming out this year. We'll probably get we'll get a new trailer for it. We'll get like a not a I don't, okay. I don't think we're gonna get a release date, but we'll get a release window. Like they'll say, oh, it's coming out in fall or summer 2023, but they won't tell us an actual day. They'll save that day thing for later. That's what I'm predicting. We'll get a new trailer. We'll get to see you know what's new about it. See how good the game looks because that trailer did look really good actually. I remember some people were like, wait. This is Pikmin 4 on the Switch? Why does it look this good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm curious to see. Uh, actually, I actually am curious to see uh, more of the game and what it looks like. But uh, yeah, so Pikmin 4, obviously, after they finally announced it last time, it's going to be here. It's coming out this year. It's, it's confirmed to be this year. And I think we're going to get a new trailer and we'll get a release window, but not a release so yeah, there you go. Pikmin 4. I forgot about Pikmin 4. Kind of a big deal, I know. Apologies. And that is all of my predictions, pretty much, uh, for uh, this Nintendo Direct. But yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> I think I got everything, pretty much. At least all the first-party stuff I think I got. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, obviously, um, uh, be on the lookout tomorrow. I will be streaming it, as per usual, here on YouTube. So be on the lookout for that. 
Um, as for the highlights, I don't know whether or not I want to put the highlights up on the secondary channel or not. I'm very tempted to start putting highlights up on the main channel, um, kind of further de-emphasizing the second channel even more than I did last year when I moved the Nincast from secondary channel back to the main channel, but I don't know, that's a whole other conversation. Point is, be on the lookout for my Nintendo Direct stream. Uh, you know, it'll, that'll be there. It'll still be up. So even if you don't watch it live, it'll still be there archived for anyone to watch if anyone's curious. And of course, if we get, you know, something big showing up, like that new Zelda trailer or whatever, I will be most likely putting up a little, like, you know, Nintendo Direct highlights video either on this channel or the secondary channel. Not 100% decided yet because I want to have the secondary channel be there for something. It needs to have a purpose. But right now, I'm not really sure what that is outside of the highlights. But I don't know. But, anyways. That's all I got to say in regards to the Nintendo Direct. So what do you guys want to see? Uh, what do you guys want to see out of this Nintendo Direct? Is there something I missed that I didn't talk about that you're interested in seeing? Um, and uh, yeah, so I guess that's going to be it. So again, stay tuned tomorrow for uh, my stream and reaction and highlights and all that fun stuff. And yeah, so with that being said, this is Logan59XP. And I'll see you guys next time.